What is up guys, it's me Aeon back again with another video, today is going to be a rant and I've seen a lot of people doing it, GGS, Kovian and some other people uh, were doing something like this and I've seen that a lot of people are not happy with the current game state, uh, there's a lot of stuff missing, I really don't understand what Lilith is doing but today we're going to talk about PvE, PvP, some balances and we're going to talk a little bit about the cash grab that they are trying to do and today we're going to go full on edge mode, so roll the intro. <laughs> So I do have here some notes so I can uh, track myself on what I'm going to talk. So we're going to talk about PvE and this is something that I have been noticing a lot and the footage that you're seeing right now on the screen is me trying to do a Kronos speed teams with only free to play units, only free to play. I was trying to do non-legendary also but to do really fast like one sub 130s i'm pretty sure i'll have to use some other legendary on the mix but those legendaries will all be free to play and this is the main problem that i have with the current pve and the mentality that lilith has brought upon us that is that we need new espers for pve and this is something that has bothered me a lot like we already beat the game what, it, most players, especially mid to late game players, we don't need new espers for PvE. Yes, a new player that just started the game might be not. He is, he doesn't need that esper. That esper might catapult him to make the game faster, but he doesn't need that esper to compete in the PvP setting. Now, if you're telling me that you want to be on the ladder, this. I will, I will try to be respectful to everyone that likes PvE, I don't, everyone already knows that I hate PvE, but I do feel that these dumb ass ladders that they have implemented in PvE, they are kinda trash, the rewards are simply not worth it, okay, they can give cool borders, but y y you saw against the people that you're trying to compete, that there are a lot of whales that will outshine <laughs> you, and people want to be competitive while being F2P, and that is not easy, but if you don't want to compete in a PvE uh, standpoint, you really don't need uh, Yun Juan, you don't need Oli, you don't need Gaius, you don't need these espers to make PvE work, okay? This is my opinion, I'm sorry if I offended you, it's not really my intention, but you don't need espers for PvE, you really, really don't, unless Lilith does something like they did. Now, for the anomaly, Mattel is kinda needed for it because of his passive burn, but even then, I've seen people doing a very high scores without Mateo, and we just started. That has a progression system, it has uh, buffs that you can gain uh, the longer you play. We only have the first 60 floors uh, available. You will have around 150 floors, you will get a lot of currency, you will have the idle currency as well to upgrade your nodes and make your team stronger. Now, yes, Mateo makes the... Mateo makes the content way easier, but way back in the day they did that with Ahmed, they tried doing that with Intisar as well when they changed Kronos, I don't forget about that one, and it, they are trying to do it again, and uh, if they keep doing it, we can kind of speculate that they're going to do for the other anomalies as well. We don't know how the Lion Teddy is going to come, but if his kit is very good on anomaly, we can understand where they're trying to go with this, and I, I don't like it i don't think this is the way that you make money to be completely honest they have so many other games that are thriving summoner's war was the first yes but if you look at summoner's war the graphics are not on par with the current standard they improved a lot and summoner's war is still thriving it's still one of the top grossing uh, turn-based games and they started copying summoner's war i don't understand why they tried to reinvent the wheel in some aspect but this is something that I really want you guys to understand and that's why I'm going to try and make a video beating the entire game with only free to play units. Yes, they might be resonated at the maximum capacity, but it takes time. These types of games, they take time. You don't want to start the game and in two, three, one month, you already beat the game. I can do everything at the fastest speeds. That, that is just not possible. You, you need to grind, you need your time to get 
to that uh, place like the, the problem with our society this time these days it's the instant gratification of you getting something it just destroyed the the ability of people to persevere and to farm more it's the same thing that when people ask me oh but but you're super fast and we can't compete yes i'm super fast because i literally lived in chronos and thank god that they made this um, festival thingy that you can see how many times people did chronos i'll show mine right now in the screen that i did chronos 29,000 times and the only person that i saw close to me was sturby with 19k and he was like okay i thought i had more i lived in chronos as well so i lived in chronos he lived in chronos but it had a 10k runs gap right i've seen people with 7 10 12 and then they're concerned and upset that they didn't get their speed and i'm just going to talk about anomaly just a little bit anomaly itself not the problem with mattel but the game mode is boring it reused stuff reused code one thing that really bothers me is that on the raging lion the one that really matters mattel speed leader work and there's nothing stating there that mattel speed leader works but on the messenger it doesn't so why does it work there but that's beside the point why is it so boring it's a boring ass pve mode it doesn't even give us anything new it, um, yamato is nothing new it's nothing that we're good yamato needs r6 even to be remotely strong nobody unless they are wailing are going to get r6 yamato so you could have given anything else you could have done a new currency a new something a new artifact a new something that okay anomaly could be like this big thing they look amazing and they could have given some sort of artifact some sort of card specific to some units that would give them small boosts but relevant boosts that maybe would change how we could build some espers epic 7 has something like those cards summoner's war has artifacts and that can completely change how an esper is played in summoner's war you have a ton of uh, units that depending on how you use their artifacts they can play differently and that is super nice why why didn't you actually implement something useful for those units it's unbelievable i really dislike this so this is what i'm talking about pve you don't need any new esper unless lilith decides that that esper is mandatory for that place someone else will figure out a way someone will figure a way out and i talked about pv talked about the anomaly i don't like it i don't like that crash grab attitude and another one that is super important and we're going to start now is pvp and whew, let me just adjust myself because i am a pvp enjoyer and I've been talking to a lot of people and a lot of people like PvP, especially RTA. But let's take P RTA aside just for now because RTA will be the main point of this video. But let's talk about the other PvP modes that we do have. We do have Point War and we do have Hollow. We have Knockout. Okay. Knockout is full auto. So <laughs> it's just something that we can't control and it doesn't feel very skillful, especially when you play against the whale. So we already have a problem there. Also, another problem is that the best rewards are on a mode that is point, it's play to win and you can't have control on what your units do. That, that is a massive beef that I have with knockout. Secondly, you just can't compete at the highest level if you don't will, as I said, very paid to win. But if we talk about Hollow Battle now, Hollow is the most disgusting PvP mode that we have at the moment. It's just literally useless to do Hollow Battle. We can be enjoying the rest of the game and Hollow Battle could could, could have disappeared and nobody would have noticed. Nobody would notice if you, like, one day you enter the game, oh, Hollow Battle is not here fine or, or if they noticed oh it didn't give rewards anyways like what is the point why did you why did you remove hollow battle for a damn week so you could make it worse than it actually was before <laughs> like, not only that you made sentinel worse by being a blitz fest it, it, it does you re completely removed the pve part of it that was making high scores for if you do 5 million it's enough so why am i going to give my best to get high scores there it just it just makes it like if i'm faster or if my guild attacks faster which it's not very plausible everyone has their times and it, you have to constantly be swapping relics you have 15 
units on each of the sentinels it's it's just ridiculous i don't understand why you killed hollow to make sentinel it doesn't really make sense now you also removed way back in the day the death penalty then when you changed the hollow battle system you said that you were going to bring back death penalty i'm talking to you lilith and then you didn't and why why am i going to strategize why am i going to make like let's say trap defenses why i'm going to make my best on my defenses if i can use the same esper over and over again okay i can make a defense that is strong against hide but if for some reason another teammate manages to kill hide from that player now that player will be gimped against me it will make people think a little bit more before attacking before doing reckless decisions that is the strategy of the game it's not just play auto and like this is not afk arena and th th this is something that I, I just noticed right now it just my mind got illuminated this is not afk arena this is not rise of kingdoms you have to take away that mentality that people enjoy autoing auto game and idle gameplay all the time. This is not the game for that. You started copying a game that is not a manual game. Summoner's War, it's not manual. Summoner's War is manual on the boring ass stuff, which is, I'm going to say, the equivalent of rituals, infinity towers, and a little bit more than that. Everything else, and, and Summoner's War has way other, has better PvP modes, which is Hollow Battle, they have Point War as well, they have RTA, which is on their 25th season, and there's other special leagues in between, and then they have a mode called Siege, which is just amazing, fantastic, and they have a much better guild uh, PvE system than this one. I don't enjoy Labyrinth, which is the PvE system for kills there, but I know a lot of people that do, it's fun, sometimes you're interacting with the boss, especially if you're early to mid-game player that you don't know, it's really fun, the mechanic of it, it's like grid-based, and I'm sure you guys, Lilith, I know you know what I'm talking about, because the Wonderland thingy that you said that you were going to bring, I think, last year, or mid this year, which still didn't re release, it's very similar, I I'm getting a lot of Labyrinth vibes from that, but why you keep constantly killing PvE? pvp each each patch pvp gets more killed i don't understand you killed hollow battle you, point war is kind of pointless you made sorry you made shuang pin which made point war even more pointless than it was already was like if anyone has shuang pin why why did i waste my gold or my money in this place by trying to rezzo let's say sally to r6 and then you release shuang pin that can make it completely useless i really don't understand no rta and no prospect of bringing rta which is the most fun pvp aspect of the game and a lot of people are going to say no rta it's not fun it doesn't feel fun yes it doesn't feel fun because you lilith you destroyed the game mode that is not how point uh, rta is supposed to be played but there's no one as per rule so everyone uses exactly the same team so if i have a fast set and i pick unas if my enemy picks unas well i will still outspeed because i have the fastest set but if my enemy picks unas and i have my fastest set on my unas i get locked out of that character so i pretty much have a fucking 500 speed set but i can't use it i can't use it because my opponent read my mind or imagine if i played against him and he knows okay his unas is faster than me so he's going to pick unas and remove it right and we wouldn't have be playing everett hide jyy all the damn time against the same you understand what i'm saying this is a diversity strategy. It doesn't matter how many characters you release. It, you can release 50 billion espers. These espers are proven to be more relevant. They are proven to be better than the rest. Hyde, Sally, JYY. Uh, let's say I, these are the ones that come into my mind. Everett, uh, Tricky. You do have, for control, you have Lucas. You have Sienna. You have Gaius for Cleave. You have Abigail. You nobody is going to shy away from those units they are under they're super overpowered thank nuxi now Xianpin, why am i going to use cecilia why i'm going to use tever tever is a shimmer five for fuck's sake i'm sorry sorry for the swearing but he's a shimmer five and when you pull him you get upset you shouldn't get upset when you pull a shimmer five Special like the, the disparity in Te Tevor versus Feng Nuxi and now Zhang Pin, it's incredible. Even Zhang Julie now, it's it, it's a reason for you to be upset when you pull him. Like my worst possible outcome right now is I'm close to pity getting a Zhang Julie. Re five or six months before pulling JJ you've won the game and JJ was broken and you didn't do nothing and you managed to kill him. And even now, 
even if you buffed JJ right now, he wouldn't be overpowered. So just so you can see the difference in in power that you made and you know exactly why you did that pity because there were a lot of whales that gave up on the game because they couldn't get Fang Nuxi and now okay uh, people are complaining that they're not getting their uh, units or specific shimmer units we're going to make an, an SSM for shimmers well lucky me <laughs> I will get to pity a lot of times on shimmers right no I won't, I'm not a whale, but the whales will, and you will make like that is why people have R6 <laughs> Xiangpin at the moment. There are people with R6 Xiangpin. This is how you want to do it. This is how you want to do it. Why people want Xiangpin in the first place? RTA is non-existent. Th there's no PvP. Why why do I want to have insane relics insane to, to, to fight against the AI? I really don't understand. You have Genshin, you have Oyoverse that did specifically PvE games, and why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? If you wanted to make a PvE game, you would have funneled hard into PvE. There are a lot of people that... Why? Why do you try to place both worlds? You just can't. Or you can if you release a game mode for PvP tryhards like me, like Sturby, like Kovian, and like other players that want... Even GGS. Those YouTubers, they we're craving for PvP. And you're not giving us. I don't understand why. Because RTA doesn't give as much money. Because people know that they can use epics and they don't need to buy and use money to buy that specific Esper, right? This is insane. I, it, it, like, the best players in your game, they, I feel burned out, to be completely honest. I really don't want to be making content for nothing. Just, like, random-ass content of, like, oh, the best Esper's for this and that. I'm doing it because it's the only way that a channel can survive at this point. And I'm trying to give my best in making PvP content. The PvP content that I put on my channel, it actually has good traction. It means people like watching it. It means that people want more PvP. They want to engage in actual skill, in actual competition. Why? Why isn't RTA in the game? You brought it three times before. Why? You have first like one Esper rule, get get us a pre-ban, and then remove that damn st star system. Make it a decay, make it a point system. Just copy and paste. E7 has the best system for RTA. Just copy it. Just copy it. Everyone is going to be happy. Because if you manage people to not be able to pick the duplicate espers, and if you have a pre-ban, then people will start looking at other characters and, okay, I won't be able to use JYY or Sally, well, maybe there are other units that I can use. Maybe Heng Hue will have more use. Let's say if I, I, I want to be a speed cleaver. Well, Unas is not there. Maybe I can use Dahlia again. Okay, Abigail is gone. Maybe I can use Lauren. There's all sorts of usable characters that they're not bad. They're simply overpowered, uh, overcrept, or are other units that are overpowered and then and why would I pick certain units if I can pick their improved versions? This is why. Understand me. Why would I use, let's say, Gai uh, why wouldn't I use Gaius or why would I use Xiao Yin in PvP or why would I use Chloe or why would I use Lin Xiao or any other AoE cleaver if I have Gaius? And if I have Ashley, they are just beyond broken for that, you know it, and that's why you allow everyone to use it. Back in the day, it was JJ Gaius. The people that didn't have Abigail and JJ on Season 2 of warm-up match, they would were in such a great disadvantage because of that. Because imagine, he had Abigail, JJ, I only had Abigail, well, I have to fight Abigail, JJ, but if I had Abigail, I picked Abigail, he wouldn't be able to pick JJ. So, ju just release, just release something, just say, at least, look, if you don't want RTA to be a mainstay event, release warm-up warm events throughout the, the months. It doesn't even need to give us rewards. Like, okay, you can give it the shop, the, the shop that it had, but it, you don't even need to give a, a skin or something along the line. Just, just make it fun for everyone to enjoy. Just put the event there. We, the try-hard players, yes, we do hate that we have to stay there 10, 15, 20 minutes for a fight, but at least, at least we have the option. Now, we don't even have a queue system for friendly fights. We constantly have to be searching for it. And finally, I will stop talking about PvP because I, I understood that Lilith, they really don't want to, to invest in PvP and it saddens me. It really does. And I'm really sorry if I'm being rude or if I'm really feeling ungrateful 
I'm just sad and frustrated because I'm playing this game to play PvP. I'm playing this game to fight against other people. I have fun doing that. PvE is fine for the first two days of the release and then it becomes boring. It becomes the, the same old thing. Tell me, who here watches the Ritual Miracles? Nobody. We click on the Minimize and there is there. Who is super excited to do Temporal or Infinity because they enjoy the process? Some, not everyone. Everyone. Most don't. Most, I'm pretty sure, most do these for the rewards. I don't enjoy Infinity Tower. It's just boring. Why can't I click Blitz and Blitz Infinity Tower? Why can't I Blitz Temporal? Why? Leave that for the people that want to enjoy it. They can use the start game and play it. I don't want it. I want to Blitz it. So why don't you give me Blitz as well? Why do you cater, cater to the PvE and you don't cater to me? It's just, I'm just spitting my heart and soul to you guys and finally balance patch balance patches when the game was introduced you released a ton of balance patches I, we were ex this was the excitement it wasn't even the new character it was who is going to get changed who is going to get balanced oh clara needs a nerf oh this needs a buff oh this needs this this needs that you 3.1.7 was the last balance patch. We are close to 8 patches without a single balance patch. There are some units that need to be nerfed and everyone knows who they are. And there are a crack ton of units that needs to be buffed. Tever, another time. He needs to be buffed. Nobody wants to pull Tever on a Shimmer record or even in a gold record because it could have been Nuxi, it could have been Jiangpin, it could have been Unas, it could have been Cecilia if that guy likes to play uh, Point War in, in, in the specific scenario. So we don't want that. People pulling Ling, Li Ling, Tang Xuan, and these characters that are only good at R6, people pulling Zora, pulling, pull, pull, pulling the Fatum sisters, which Fatum sisters are good. They are very good. I'm doing a video using them in Chronos, and I've noticed that they are super good. They are good, but they need some tweaks to be viable, to be very good. And it, it, you don't need to be releasing a new Esper every patch. You don't. You don't. That is not how you make money. There are people that are want to invest in units that they already have, and then if they like that character, they will will to try and get that Esper to R6 as well. And you know that. You know that. You would have been making way more money selling actually red, the boxes, the ripple boxes. Okay, I'm not telling you to do that, <laughs> but <laughs> like you removed, the, you removed the ripple boxes because you knew people wouldn't wail as much. And this, this is a problem, man. Stop making new units. Balance the ones that we already have. Balance the units that we already have. Make the game, change the meta, change the meta. This is how you change the meta. It doesn't matter, you can introduce 50 billion new units. If they are not as cracked as the previous one, nobody is going to use them and that's why you may champion. Not only you improve the rating on her, which is crazy, you made her so busted that everyone will would want her, I included. I really want her, but she's a shimmer and the people that don't have her, they're going to be disappointed and then the other aspers, whenever they pull other aspers, well, it's not Jiangpin. Well, it's not Gaius. And, 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 like, and GGS, he said it the best, that we always compare people to Gaius. Okay, it, the, the, it's not to nerf Gaius, but make more relevant units. Or buff the current ones that we have to be good. In my opinion, the first change that you did to Tang Xuan, to me, was a massive nerf. A mega nerf. Tang Xuan, at the time, was already quote-unquote bad and you made it even worse you made it even worse i don't understand it like the the previous uh tang shuan with the current buffs on him right now he would have been insanely strong he ignored defense on his second skill and now he just has a small heal why why did you remove the ignore defense on his second skill? His third skill, yes, now it does grant a AP a defense break, but it's 40%. Why? Before it was a hundred percent AP reduction, 15% AP reduction. Every time he attacked, he would reduce 15% of AP. I do prefer that than a 40% defense break, which also has the resistance chance. So all the changes that you did to our boy, you nerfed it. You nerfed a character that was already bad. 
Liling, Liling, you locked him into R6 because Liling used to be very good dealing a ton of damage on his third skill. I did enjoy the buff on a second, for, uh, giving more AP, but you removed the, the, the HP scaling, which I don't understand why. You could have simply added that crit and everyone would have been happy and still Liling wouldn't be broken. He wouldn't be broken. I do understand that, I, I mean, to be completely honest, I really don't understand. I really don't understand why you did it. And then uh, Li Ling, you, you've put his crazy R6, which makes him cycle super fast. And at R6, Li Ling becomes extremely good. But prior to R6, well, sucks to be you, wail more and get the R6. It, it, it saddens me that every new release or the Asper is super good at R6 or it's bad or it's good at R2. But Mateo, Leora and others, they are not. But for PvP, they are mediocre. Yes, a lot of people like Leora, but you have Gaius. You have Gaius. If you do have Gaius, the only place that Leora outshines Gaius is in K16. But we were already doing K16 without Leora. So we don't need Leora to do K16. You don't. You don't. You need Gaius, you need Gaius for everything. Gaius is much better in towers than her, Gaius is better in PvP than her. Gaius, and Gaius was doing Kronos fine, he was doing fine. So, this is the end of it, guys. Thank you for watching, thank you for staying with me until the end, the people that stayed with me until the end. If you did, leave a comment on the comment section below saying that I survived the 25 minutes of Aeon ranting. I am Aeon, thank you for being here, and Lilith please do better. Thank you.